Hi everybody, this is Warren Herman, and today I'm going to be talking to you about some very important principles that can help you understand how to think. And so, you know, it's very interesting. Um, a long time ago, Father Pierre Teilhard de Chardin um, said that, you know, that in his opinion, there's a quote that you'll find if you do research on this, you know, you'll be able to find the exact wording of it. But he talked about how the idea for him of evolution was the means, by, was, was not just a way of thinking, or not just something you could think, but for him it was the key to how to think all thought. For it, so it was the means by which he would understand every single idea, a, a, a fundamental uh, paradigm, a fundamental organizing principle of all thought itself. And this is the thing, this fundamental organizing principle of all thought itself is the kind of thing I want to talk to you about today. Because there's always, uh, there's certain ways that we can think about the world. There's certain ways that we can have as fundamental organizing principles for how we approach all knowledge, for how we organize all knowledge, for how we integrate knowledge. And this type of thing is very important today because today there's so many, um, there's so many different ideas floating around that it's very hard to make sense of what's even happening. And the thing that's interesting is that Usually, there are, um, and, it's, this, and this is the reason why I'm making this video, is because it's very important to realize that these fundamental principles are really the only things that you really can't integrate. So, for example, you can use the principle of evolution to integrate different ideas. And evolution is the essential principle that, um, and I don't support this principle, by the way, we'll get to that in a minute, is the idea that one type of thinking can just kind of transform into another. Um, so, for example, in the Catholic Church, this was described as the central principle. Um, I believe it's in the, the, uh, the encyclical Pascendi. Um, the Pope described this as the, the evolution was the essential principle of modernism. And modernism is what the Pope was describing as a synthesis of all heresy. And the reason why he described it as the synthesis of all heresy, and sometimes it's been called the quicksilver heresy, is because it's not so much that there's one idea that is the modernist idea, but modernism is the idea that things can mean different things now than they used to mean, and that one type of thing can transform into another type of thing. One kind of thing can become another kind of thing. Um, without it, it is some one thing can evolve into another essentially, and that there's no real nature to the original thing to begin with because it can change into the nature of something different. So essentially, it's this idea of no stable natures of anything. Um, and if with this idea, we can really come to understand um, how you can have things like okay, well, um, and I'll give you an example. Like so, an example would be um, something like saying you know okay. Uh, something very simple would be like, okay, um, God created Adam and Eve means that, now means that God, that now means that man evolved from apes. So, so for example, or a, from a common ancestor. So it's like, you could say, okay, well that, or that, so it's like, it's like you can take one doctrine that clearly says, okay, God created this and did this, and oh, now it means this. Um, so it can change its meaning. It can change the sense of the ultimate sense of what it means. And these kind of things you can't really do because, you know, as you know, some of the different councils have said, um, whatever was something is, is, is uniformly believed by the church fathers, we, we have to follow that. And so we see um, that the church fathers didn't have these type of beliefs. Okay, yeah, like they didn't believe in molecules to man evolution. Um, they, they believed in a, cre a type of creation. And there's very good philosophical arguments for, for why you can't really have one nature turn into another in addition to scientific arguments. Um, but the important thing here is that we're talking about principles of synthesis. And the reason why... Um, you know, uh, these type of things have come about, or, you know, or the, well, essentially the, the principle that, um, and it's really interesting because it traces this type of principle um, back to uh, Descartes. And Descartes talked a lot about, you know, how, you know, you, you have to use, um, you know, uh, you have to like, you have to kind of look at things in order to try to know where they came from. You have to like look at, um, you have to use things now in operation to try to explain things in the past. You have to use the present as the key to the past. Um, and in a way, it's very interesting because this would be like taking a car and saying, okay, like th that we only can look at the car itself to see, you know, um, to see how the car, um, you know, was the car developed. 
And without and saying, okay, we can't believe. We have to say, okay, there's only things outside in the world now. You know, if they, we only could see things, you know, because we can't see what's going on inside the factory. We can only look at, okay, here's a car, and we're not allowed to think that there could be some type of a process outside of the the road and the world in which you find cars. There can't be anything that goes on in that factory over there. Um, and that's kind of the, the philosophical difference between um, these paradigms, is that these paradigms um, believe that we can kind of paradoxes that kind of like see into things and try to figure out where they came from and stuff like that. But the thing that's, um, that's, that, that, that ends up happening is that these principles lead to an understanding that things can change, you know, when, when, especially when this applied to natural science and this is used to kind of undermine revelation, this is used to understand that everything, things can become different things, that things can become other kinds of things. And so the thing is, and this is a kind of a principle, you know, um, which we, you know, have, you know, it, it operates in all kinds of ways in today's society. Um, you know, and so the thing is that we can have things can transform into other things. Um, and they can kind of, there's no stable, um, they don't even transform because they don't have a form. You know, it's like it's not really one form to another. There is no stable nature. So therefore, um, one thing can kind of grow into the next thing. And there's really no distinction between those things. Um, and in a way, this type of an understanding is the only type of understanding that you can't integrate it from another perspective. And the other perspective that we want to understand is the perspective of the incarnate word. So, for example, um, things do develop. Things do change. So, for example, um, you know, so, for example, there, 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 there's possibilities of change. There's possibilities um, of, so, for example, we talk about in the church the idea of development of doctrine. And there is authentic development of doctrine. So, for example, um, people like uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe, um, 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 we, we have a very interesting development of doctrine right before he's arrested by the Gestapo or the, you know, the, the Nazis and taken away to the concentration camp. He's contemplating the idea of how, um, why does the Mary, um, when, when, when the Virgin Mary appears to um, St. Bernadette. Why does Mary use this shocking, almost uh, shocking and strange expression, I am the Immaculate Conception? And St. Maximilian reflects on this because he says, how could this be? You know, I guess some of the things that could be confusing is like, well, okay, well, isn't, um, isn't uh, Adam, you know, um, or is it Eve, you know, immaculately conceived in a sense? Um, and he says, well, actually, or isn't Jesus? So, you know, it's like, what about these, uh, you know, what about these things? You know, it's, um, you know, there's this, there's this sense of, you know, um, Mary says, I am the Immaculate Conception because, you know, essentially he rules out, you know, Adam and Eve being Immaculately Conceived because he says, okay, well, no, they haven't been conceived at all. They would have been Immaculately Conceived and Mary would have been wrong. She's not the Immaculate Conception if they were conceived because they would have been conceived without sin. Um... So therefore, if she comes down from heaven and she says, I am the Immaculate Conception, that gels with what Scripture says, you know, that they, Adam and Eve were not conceived. But modern thing, you would say, okay, well, even if we have Adam and Eve, which it's, it's, it's um, they, they must have been conceived in the womb of a primate, you know, of something, and then they were given a soul. But then Mary would not have learned, used this, um, this expression, I am the Immaculate Conception, because there'd be two others, Adam and Eve. So we can say that it's, it's now here's an interesting thing is that St. Maximilian is developing doctrine right before he's arrested and put in the concentration camp. He's developing doctrine, but it's a development that is in harmony with previous doctrine. He hasn't actually said something that is different, that has made one kind of doctrine into another kind of doctrine. So, for example, the doctrine that Adam and Eve were, you know, created from the ground um, or you know, it was created immediately by God. Um, in in some ways, you know, we we we, um, we can really, uh, in a lot of ways, say that's a different kind of a doctrine. There are some type of ways we can kind of play with this in some ways, but but really, it's a different kind of doctrine. Um, it's a different kind of thing. One kind of thing is becoming another kind of thing. Whereas when Saint Maximilian is developing doctrine, he is thinking with through the same kind of thing and bringing it more toward its. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's growth, and that's the, that's the metaphor that's given. You know, when we understand the development of doctrine, is it's understood like that. You know, it's like a, a seed is not a different kind of thing than a plant. A nut is not a different kind of thing than a tree. 
So an acorn is not a different kind of thing than an oak, but it, but it is at a completely different phase of development. You know, it's not, but it's not a different change in kind. It's a change in phase. It's a change in stage. You know, there's there's, there's the same. Um, it's part of the same process. So there is a way um, where you know there is a way you know in which um, there's a way in which that we can really say that. Um, you know there is this um, this this kind of thing where the church doctrine can develop, but it develops as the same kind of thing, and it's so important to realize that what kind of thing then is the church, and how do we understand this principle of development of doctrine in in, in contrast to the understanding of modernism, in contrast to a false understanding of how to integrate all knowledge in terms of you know as Pierre Teilhard de Sardin said the way we think the way he would think is based on evolution. And that's the essence of modernism, that one type of thing can change into another type of thing. Um, not saying that there's not brilliance to using the idea of evolution and integrate things. And this would be um, an actual, I think if you look at the integral movement um, by Ken Wilber, um, or, you know, things like, uh, you know, these type of ideas like evolutionary enlightenment, you could see these integrationary um, things, you know, it's Ken Wilber's thing, it's just about theory of everything. Um, these are means that are similar to, you know, what, what that the people like Sri Aurobindo um, also use the term integral. Um, you know, th- these people, it's Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, Ken Wilber, um, uh, you know, th- these folks, you know, these folks kind of use these ideas to integrate knowledge based on the principle of evolution. And based on the principle, there's not a difference that, 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 that divine nature and human nature are the same or that one nature can become another nature. And the real thing, the problem is that it's, it, but we really, these are, this is the only kind of idea that you can't integrate. So you can't, you, you can't integrate methods of integration, but you can integrate all other forms of knowledge. So I don't believe you can integrate any form of evolution into Catholic thinking, but you can integrate all other forms of thinking. The thing here is that, you know, um, you can't, because the thing is, you can't change the principle on which you're using to integrate. These are principles of integration, not integratable things themselves. Um, so here's the thing. When you have this principle of integration, this should be the principle of the incarnate word. This is the principle by which God operates. This, and these are the, we can call this in various ways the principle of redemption, the principle of the incarnation, even the principle of the crucifixion. These are the principles of reconciliation, of integration, the principles of, that, by, that, that we can understand. These type of concepts can help us try to grasp um, the, the, the principle of the incarnate word, that we can understand how we can understand how things come together. Because, see, the way that it works is that, like, so for example, in the incarnation of Christ, we have the divine nature being joined to the human nature. So we see this integration of things. Um, not an evolution of one nature that the divine nature, that the human nature develops into it, such as, like, um, this would be more of, like, a Buddhist model. Um, you know, so these type of things. Um, like, you, you're not developing your same nature into different stages in this sense. You are actually um, getting one nature is being redeemed by another. Um, and this is the same type of thing you see in the image of, you know, Our Lady of Guadalupe, for example. Um, you know, she's kind of dressed in, uh, or even or even the different appearances of Our Lady, the apparitions around the world. You know, she kind of is dressed in the garb of the people that she goes there. So, so for example, she's dressed as kind of like a, you know, kind of these Aztec imagery. You know, in the um, when she shows up uh, as Our, Our Lady of Guadalupe, she she takes on something. Even the way in which. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the early church, you know, was open then to the Gentiles, took on other cultures, took on, took over Rome, essentially, you know, you know, took on the cultural forms, took on the Latin language, took on these things. There's this development of this, this redemption principle that runs through authentic Christianity. And so essentially, there's this need to understand that, you know, um, we need to hold essentially to tradition as the means of redemption of outside things. So the thing is, there are two errors we can make. We can make this error of this modernist integration of, you know, of saying, um, you know, we could say, okay, the, the, this is, um, you know, the error of modernism is the idea, it's like, okay, like, using the principle of evolution to integrate everything and transform everything into something else and just kind of progress, this kind of progressive movement. Um, one thing's going to change into another. Um, then the other type of thing we can make is a mistake of which we might call um, which I really see really as an error, not so much that it's like, okay, it doesn't have the same type of thing. Because, for example, 
Um, it's very good to follow tradition. Like, it's not intrinsically bad. The thing is that, you know, um, we just want to make sure that we that, that tradition has its proper vocation. We don't want to have, because, um, like, for example, if it's understood that Israel was, when the covenant was made with Abraham, he said, all nations will be blessed through you. This co Even covenant is an idea that is an integration idea. Covenant is a, is a very important principle of integration. Um, which we can see, you know, even even the way that scripture is both human and divine in a sense, like it's written truly by true authors, yet it's only what God intended to consign to the actual sacred text. So it's like, you know, there's this way in which um, these principles of incarnation, these principles of God meeting man are the real principles of integration that run through everything. And so here's the, the thing really is understanding that we can't integrate evolution because in evolution is a false principle of integration. So the thing is, what we can integrate is this covenantal, um, incarnational, crucifixion, resurrection type of principle. This type of thing is what we can use to integrate knowledge. And so the examples of this would be St. Thomas Aquinas, which who took the, the thinking of Aristotle and brought it into the Catholic faith and kind of up-leveled Aristotle and made Aristotle even more illuminated, made Aristotle even better um, you know, in those type of ideas. Um, and, 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 and and increased, you know, the volume of, uh, you know, the, the increased um, the expanse of the Catholic faith in doing so. The same type of thing happened, you know, with thinkers, they, were like, they took in things like Plato, you know, there's different things, you know, ways in which these type of Platonic ideas kind of came in in some ways, you know. Um, there's a lot of ways in which this can happen, and this can continue to happen. This can continue to happen uh, to other ideologies. There's ways in which we can take in more and more things. There's ways in which, if you look at people like Scott Hahn, you know, can take in the best of uh, Protestant scriptural focus, you know, and bring that to the next level as a Catholic. You know, there's ways in which there are certain things we can take in, but we can't take in things that are evolutionary because the principle on which we take things in is an integration that is incarnational, not evolutionary. It's not a development of one thing into another. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a redemption of one thing by another thing, um, you know. And um, and becoming what it was supposed to be through that. So it's this thing of uh, this is the principle by which you know um, you know things can only become what they are by becoming Catholic. Um, it's this principle that, like, yeah, so so Aristotle wasn't really what Aristotle was always meant to be until it became what St. Thomas made him into. Um, you know, the culture of the Aztecs wasn't what it was supposed to be until the Virgin Mary showed up, you know, and became Our, our Lady of Gua Guadalupe, you know, kind of taking on those symbols, elevating that culture. You know, there's, there's these things aren't what they are until they get redeemed. And so that's the principle of incarnation, the, of the incarnation of redemption, uh, of principle of the, of the word, you know, rather than this principle of, you know, um, the lo this is really the, 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 it's really the fight of the principle of the logos versus the principle of anti-logos, the, princi the fight of Christ versus anti-Christ. Um, and the only thing we can integrate is evolution because it's a false principle of integration. Um, so the principle of integration has to be a redemptive principle. So this is, this is, this is what I'm talking about here. So there's this, this is really the thing, um, that I wanted to kind of communicate in this video is understanding that this is really the the way that we have to go if we want to integrate all knowledge if we want to bring all people together if we want to have a harmonious society if we want to actually do the things that they're trying to do in the new age movement or trying to do in these evolutionary attempts if we want to actually do this at a completely better level um, or the only way it really could ever be done is by turning to Catholic principles and by understanding Catholic tradition. We don't want to go to a type of tradition that doesn't fulfill its vocation. That's what happened, you know, I was saying with Abraham, you know, um, uh, and, and the, per the vocation of the Jewish people was to actually uh, be a blessing to all nations. It wasn't just to be, you know, uh, special in themselves or isolated from the other nations. The real problem with traditionalism sometimes